Welcome to Boss Up Goddess. I'm Elizabeth Ann Atkins, and I interview trailblazing women who share their wisdom to help us all live bigger, better, and bolder. With us today is a woman who's doing exactly that. Her name is Sarah Santa Croce, and she is founder of the Gentle Business Revolution. She has a new book, and it's brilliant. It's called The Gentle Marketing Revolution, Reconnect with Integrity and Kindness to Grow a Sustainable Business and Life. Sarah Santa Croce is coming to us live from Switzerland. Welcome, Sarah. And I just want to kind of point out that we didn't agree to both wear red today, but that was the first <laughs> thing we noticed. And we were like, oh. So, um, so yeah, the gentle business revolution, that was kind of, um, you know, some people call it a uh, midlife crisis. I prefer Brene Brown's term, uh, the midlife awakening. And so that's what happened for me. Oh my gosh, I'm super excited to talk with you because when I read your book, I felt like, wow, she's talking to me. She's <laughs> saying, don't do all those marketing things that I've tried and didn't work. Um, and put so much time and effort into it. So, so Sarah, can you talk about why you started the Gentle Business Revolution and how it evolved into your book and teaching platform? Yeah, uh, a couple of years ago, when I kind of probably like you, I was like, oh my God, I, I just don't know if I can really continue doing uh, this the way I'm taught to do. Uh, and I'm referring to marketing my business. So I, I've grown up in this online marketing world. I, I've run a business, a LinkedIn consulting business for uh, 12 years now. And so knowing and learning all these uh, things that we're supposed to do when we have an online business. But um yeah, these couple of years ago, I was just like, I am so tired of the manipulation and the tricks and the urgency and the false urgency and the, the scarcity that we're supposed to be using and all these things. I, I think I'm going to have to give up. It was either giving up or finding a different way. And so I was like, well, I think that's what I'm meant to do. I'm meant to stand up and say, hey, there's got to be a different way to do this. And so that's mm -hmm, when the mm -hmm. gentle business revolution was, um, was kind of this term that just came to me. And then I ran, you know, as we online people do, I ran to the internet. And I'm like, I wonder if this domain name is still available. <laughs> it was. <laughs> so that's so Sarah, can went. you just Oh, I love it. Can you please define what is the gentle business revolution in mm. comparison to the standard of how we're taught to market? Yeah. Now? So it started with business and then the idea of the writing the marketing book came after, but did this word gentle, uh, and in opposition, in a way, with the word revolution, because they're kind of like, huh, how does this go together, right? Revolution, you think yeah. of like, rah, rah, like uh -huh. hard kind of stuff. And, and mm -hmm. at the same time, gentle, well, that means something soft and kind and, and, and with empathy and integrity. So, yeah, that's really how I felt like all my, you know, during all my business years, I felt like. I don't belong in this tough online business world because I want to do always to do things the gentle way with, with empathy and understanding for my clients. And, you know, oh, uh, you can't afford my rates. I, I'm sorry. Like, how can we find a middle way? And, and yet what I was taught is like, there's the mm -hmm. sales script and you have to just tell them to put it on the credit card and it'll be okay. So like, you know, bringing this empathy and integrity to, to the business world. That's really what I wanted. And I wanted it to be a revolution that kind of comes from my upbringing because I grew up in a hippie commune. And so, uh -huh. you know, kind of this revolutionary uh, way of growing up and, and, and all the values that I inherited from my parents. It's like, you know, do things differently, be who you are, uh, empathy and fairness and all of these things. So, that's how the, the gentle revolution came about. Wow, that is boss up goddess. Do it your own way. Blaze your own trail and serve as a teacher and example to all of us. So, Sarah, can you just break it down with a few things like, um, 
you say, don't make an avatar of your target client. Like so many of us have spent so much time trying to figure out who's my avatar, what's their name, where do they live, how old, why do you not need to do that? I think it's it's so true that so many marketing uh, programs that's where they start right it's all about them it's all about the outside let's go hunt for this ideal avatar client where i say well that's okay but what if we started with ourselves first what if we went inwards oh. first and figured out well who am I? And, you know, what's my business all about? What's my story? What are my values? What's my worldview? Mm -hmm. And then once you got that, you bring more of you to your marketing so that you then really connect with your ideal client. So there's a Mm -hmm. resonance at play so that you don't have to go hunt after them, but they just kind of, you know, relate to you because you have the same worldview you share the same stories all of that so i'm saying so that comes to get the mm-hmm. avatar i love it it's essentially saying be authentic and that sort of flips sort of a magnet switch inside you that attracts people who are like-minded and yeah. Catherine and i have actually done that in our business we have organically attracted people who share the same vision of giving exactly. voice to diverse stories against the odd success. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Powerful. So here's the question, Sarah, does it work? Because I've signed up for different programs and they send you these super aggressive salesy emails and the people sending them are millionaires. And so their method is working for some people, but does this work? Yeah. Yeah. That's always the first question. And it, it's, you know, very relevant, obviously, this question. However, it's also very left brain oriented. So it's like, you know, facts and figures, does it work? And, and, and yes, it works that I'm talking about the hype marketing. Yes, that works. And, and so they got lots of stats and figures to prove it. However, it works in the immediate, right? That, that's how you make the most money in the shortest time. The people that you and I want to talk to are are people who want to build a sustainable business without the hustle. So we want to have long-term clients that then refer us to their friends. And so it's really, it's not just, does it work, but does it work for you? So that's the question that I want to ask my clients. If this hustle game still works for you, then, you know, great, go do that. But if, if you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe I sent out this email that I was taught to do by this and this program. And it just doesn't feel good pushing out these, you know, really, really hypey stuff. Then I think you probably come to the same c- conclusion that I came to. And I'm like, it's just not working for me anymore. So do I dare changing it? Maybe not knowing immediately if it's going to work but it's going to work for you because you're going to have more joy in your life. You're going to like love marketing again. Uh Right. uh So it's not about, is it going to work, but is it going to work for you? And yes, I have tons of examples of people where it does work. Okay. I want to hear some. Yeah. So, so for example, uh, my, my coach, uh, Jenny Blake, she wrote a book called pivot and, and she's been in marketing that way her like her entire career. And what she says is it's slower because building relationships with clients takes time. Building trust takes mm-hmm. a bit more time. Yes. So you really have to have this vision of building a sustainable business. Mm-hmm. So if you need immediate bucks, then yeah, you, that's not going to work. You don't build friendships overnight either, right? Mm. But it really works on the long term and it makes you just so much freer and, and happier. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Dory Clark is another one that's uh, probably known from by a few people. Dory Clark, I, I look up to her as a gentle marketer. There's never anything pushy coming for, from her. She has a million dollar business. Like, and there's no funnel and pushiness anywhere to be seen in her business so Mm. yeah it works um it takes a bit of patience it's it's like 
authenticity grows organically. You can't mm. fake authenticity, right? No. No, not at all. Not at all. So Sarah, you're on a mission for as many people to hear this message as possible. Can you talk about the platform and the campaign that you've created around the book? Yes. Yeah, so, so I sat with this idea, like, how does a gentle marketer uh, publish a book gently? You know, like, how does a gentle <laughs> book launch look like? And so I uh-huh. looked at the different, you know, kind of stuff that's out there. And it, it all felt still very me, 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 look at me, look at my book. And that didn't resonate with me. And so I wanted to find a way where you launch a book, but it's not about the book, but it's about the message of the book. Mm. And so it was actually my husband who who said, why don't you look at Kickstarter? It's a platform for creatives who want to put a project into the, the world. And yes, the idea of Kickstarter is, is crowdfunding. But it goes beyond that. Like for me, it wasn't necessarily the, the funding, but it was really to create a community on Kickstarter to, to have people say, yes, we want, you, we want you to finish this book and put it out there. So, mm-hmm. so that's what I'm using. And, and again, it's, you know, I talk about gentle marketing also where you bring more creativity to the marketing. And for mm-hmm. me, it was it was just a fun project to find out how does Kickstarter works. And, and now I'm working with a sketch designer and she's kind of creating these visuals for it. And so it's it's an actual fun thing to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what we all want. We want not, we don't want to hate marketing anymore. We want it to be fun and, and joyful. And effective because the feeling of investing time, energy, money, creativity into marketing that doesn't work is so frustrating, infuriating. It makes you not want to market. So like, yeah, what's the and point? Exactly. And then you feel because you, you know, it was so strenuous, you feel exhausted and you feel like less than you feel like you're probably a loser because it's not working for you and 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 it works for this millionaire who sold you this program for you know, <laughs> ten thousand bucks and so it's just a frustrating process where yeah. you make it fun and and you know it works then uh, you know everything is just much more fun yes so Sarah, what are three things you can tell us entrepreneurs right now who can transform our marketing style into the gentle marketing, gentle business revolution. Right. I, I would say it starts always with awareness. So kind of go Marie Kondo style on your inbox, maybe. And, you know, look at the, the emails that you're getting and look at it from this gentle marketing perspective. Are the emails that you're getting from things that you signed up for, are they resonating with you or are you feeling like you're being pushed or you're being manipulated or there's false urgency? Um, you know, there's, there's a good thing about urgency and, and I'm not saying that's completely wrong to say, you know, this offer ends tomorrow and, you know, <laughs> we would love to have you join us. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's how you say it. And if people make you feel bad for not joining, you're like, you know, there's these emails that I, I, I kept where it's like, if you're not joining, then uh, you'll never get a chance again at this price, blah, blah, blah. They make you feel like, oh, my God, I better join. Otherwise, like my life is going to end. Right. So there's a way to use urgency. <laughs> so just start to be aware of these techniques and, and, and probably unsubscribe from, from those that just don't feel good anymore. So, Mm -hmm. so that's the first thing. So kind of go selective. And then the, the second thing is, is again, paying attention to the how. So now in your own marketing, how can you um, bring in more empathy into your messages and really make people uh, feel that, you understand their problem. Mm. I also talk about the exaggeration of the problem. We're always taught in marketing, you have to really, you know, make people feel that they have this problem and hone in on the problem. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's okay to mention the problem and tell them that you understand that problem. But from then, 
move to a more positive marketing, tell them mm-hmm. about your solution, not mm-hmm. about, you know, the problem they have. So kind of switch the idea from, from like negative marketing to, to positive marketing. Mm-hmm. And then decide maybe on one or two things that haven't felt good that you were doing because you felt like you should be doing it. Wow. For example, like webinars, right? We're always taught that there needs to be a sales pitch on a webinar. Who says? Who who decided that? And why are we all following it? Like you can do a webinar and just not sell on it at all and, and just invite people to a one-on-one call, for example. Mm-hmm. Like who says you have to have these 20 minutes at the end and do like this annoying sales pitch that everybody hates like by right. now we all know oh no we know what's coming right it's, right you know, and you feel safe. tricked yeah you feel exactly. tricked because they're free webinar and then you get there and it's like this super heavy sales pitchy thing exactly and just do it differently yeah. yes oh wow those are three things so the first one is awareness and to be aware of what kinds of marketing is coming at you and unsubscribe yeah. from those that make you uncomfortable the number two is look at your own yeah. and, and evaluate what you've been doing that you don't like and stop doing it. And the third one is rethink the way you do webinars. They don't have yeah, to be It aggressive. could be webinars. It could be, you know, anything that feels uncomfortable that mm-hmm. you've been doing and you don't want to do anymore that we, we are just taught that that's the way it is right. Mm-hmm. For example, um, you know, there's this idea that everybody has to have a, a free Facebook group oh. and we kind of feel, you know, pushed into having that as part of one of our offers. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, they feel like so draining for me personally. Again, it depends, you know, who you are and, and what feels good to you. But if that's not your thing, then, you know, give yourself permission to not, offer them, do something Mm. else. Mm, I love it. So Sarah, this really comes again, back to going within, like you said, and figuring out what feels good for you, not what you're supposed to do. Because I always think a lot of things that come after the word supposed to do are, or I should, um, are wrong. They're not right for us. What do I want? And that requires getting still shutting out all the noise and, and doing what works for you. So do you have any tips on finding the courage to do that, especially if someone just launched a business and they do have that sense of urgency to bring in some money to support their new endeavor? Mm. Yeah, it, it's definitely, um, you know, very, very challenging at the beginning because all we do is compare and see what everybody else does, right? Mm-hmm. And so if if you're just starting out, I think at the, the first thing I would do is, is probably connect with people whom you've worked with at, you know, maybe at the company that you worked with before or like really kind of reignite those relationships that you mm-hmm. already have. I think that's always the best way to to get some immediate business going and and often people don't want to go back there because they're like oh no but I quit that because I want to start something new but often that is the best way to get immediate business because Mm -hmm. otherwise we get you know we get pulled into this online thing where we have to create the whole structure and everything first and when the business is actually sitting in right in front of us and we're just Mm -hmm. like ignoring it so wow. I think that would be my first advice. Wow, that's so powerful, Sarah. And you're doing all of this. You're example, you're practicing what you preach. So can you talk a little bit more about the book, the campaign, the where can people find it and participate? Yeah, so the the Kickstarter campaign is at sarahsanacroce.com forward slash Kickstarter. 
and it's live until January 5th. And yeah, you'll see when you visit the page, we're, we're just having fun. I have this sheep theme, if you remember in the book, Elizabeth. And yeah. so I hired a, a, a sketch uh, artist who, who came up with some really beautiful and, and funny, in my opinion, visuals of sheep. And, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, it's just it's just a fun thing to do. And, and the idea there is, is to join the community. There's different levels of support. And it's just also a way of saying, yes, we need a different marketing paradigm we need more empathy and kindness in the in the business world so that's at saracenencroce.com forward slash kickstarter if you're interested in finding out more about um this way this different way of of marketing I'm just going to hold up also my mandala with the seven p's um so um that's kind of how i redefined the seven p's of of marketing and uh -huh. you see that the first three are really around finding this, this unique way, uh, finding your unique way, and that's passion, personal power, and so really finding it out, out, out about your story. And then we go into people, product, pricing, promotion, and partnerships. So wait, wait, this is brilliant. So you, is this, this is part of the book, right? And you created this yourself, the, the, is it seven P's? Yeah, seven the seven P's. P's of marketing is a marketing concept that's been out there uh, for a long time. What I did um, when I thought about these seven P's, usually they're, they're like separate circles. Yeah. I'm like, why are they separate? They need to be all together because it's a creative process. And so mm -hmm. I saw this mandala in front of me and mandala, the mandala itself is a creative process. And we use the mandala to get to our center so in the middle, we are us, the entrepreneur is in the center. And so in a way, marketing is a way to find to your center and then you oh. use the seven Ps to bring your message to the world. So that's Oh my gosh, this is the most powerful thing I've ever heard about marketing, Sarah. That is <laughs> like my, my soul is singing and my oh, whole body is like tingling at this because that that really is like an epiphany moment. It brings it all together and we're at the center. Right. It's not external. It's not somebody else's formula. It's us radiating yeah. through all those parts. Mm. <gasps> oh my gosh. You should make posters of those and let people <laughs> post them like in their office. Yeah. And I'm especially proud because it's my son, Simon, who designed it. So I'm oh. like, Ooh. and he made, he made me a, a mouse pad last Christmas. So <laughs> I'm using it. Uh, yeah. To hold up. Is so, that the so if people want to download that, that's at sarasanacroche.com forward slash one, the number one page. And oh. so it's kind of like a, a seven uh, email prompt to reflect upon these different P's and, and think, well, how do I bring all of that to my marketing. Wow. And I've read about the seven P's before, but they never resonated like that. It's, it right. was, again, it was this external thing, like, this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah, 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 exactly. That there were like different, different, like some of the P's are the same promotion, pricing uh -huh. and product. Those are the same, uh -huh. but then there was like physical evidence. I'm like, who cares about physical evidence? <laughs> we care about partnership. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's so powerful. So after the 5th of January, when your campaign concludes, then what? Then uh, I'm going to, um, in February, there's a uh, International Random Acts of Kindness Week that mm -hmm. I just yeah. found out by coincidence that that's in February and it's good timing because I uh -huh. decided to do a gentle book launch. So an official book launch when it's um, available on Amazon during that week. And I'm inviting um, different people who talk about kindness in business onto the podcast. And, and my book will be the sponsor, so to speak, of, of that series of events. Oh. I'm looking forward to it. I, I, there's a really great mm. website for people to check out that's called randomactsofkindness.org. And so uh, one of the ladies, uh, one of the founders is going to come and speak on the podcast uh, from, from mm -hmm. that site and, and different, yeah, kindness projects around the world, which I'm really excited about. Oh, Sarah, where can we hear your podcast? A podcast is called The Gentle Business Revolution, and you can find it on, 
on my site or otherwise um, on iTunes. Oh, beautiful. And then where can people find you as well? Where do you prefer yeah, so to Yeah, so the be main found? site is Sarah Santa Croce and, and maybe we'll put it in. <laughs> so yeah, It's never definitely. easy to type out, so we'll put the link. Um, For sure. In the description. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn, Facebook mm -hmm. as well. Are you offering any kind of course to go along with your book or any kind of coaching? Yeah, so so it was interesting because we were together in a in a mastermind, uh, right, with Lisa. And that was, I think it was 2018 ending in 2019. And, yeah. and uh, during that whole time, you, you were like, oh, you should write this book. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know, I'm not ready. It seems oh. like tw 2020 is going to be the book writing. And so 2019, I used to create the Gentle Marketing Revolution course. Mm -hmm. So I, I spent all of that year to build that course together with three beta um, groups. And, and that was amazing. And then it was so funny because then COVID happened in 2020. And, and I was like, oh, I have all this time to write wow, the book. It was like Sarah. serendipity, you know. It's oh, just, my gosh. So wait, right. everybody listen to this. Sarah and I met at Lisa Peterson's Atlas Collective um, Mastermind Group. And that is where you connect with like-minded individuals like she's advocating who are heart-centered and are doing the gentle marketing revolution even though we didn't know we were yet because she put the <laughs> name on it <laughs> and then we connected. And then from that, her also look at how she spent years cultivating this. It wasn't an overnight thing. It wasn't like, boom, it, she researched, you, you had a beta group to how many, it's a couple beta groups, which means yeah, a testing three. group yeah. for three, three beta groups to test your product, your message. And with that feedback wrote the book, which is, awesome it's so in detail it's in depth and really instructive and powerful and then you took the time you invested the energy in writing which is one of the hardest yeah, things. And, and kudos to your uh, weekly writing class as well like I oh, was there right. every Wednesday <laughs> oh that's right Sarah was in the two sisters writing club which is an online time and space to get your writing done oh that's yeah. right yay <laughs> We're so proud of you, Sarah. You're such an amazing, you're welcome. You're such an amazing example of someone who has a vision inspired by seeing a void in the world and wanting to be authentic and share that gift and that message that's radically different from what we've been taught with the world. So you're doing what your parents said. Yeah. To, <laughs> and you're I also- I hope I'll make them proud. I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I absolutely hope anybody who's trying to market, read this book because it really will shift your mind, your heart, your spirit into a whole new realm that will empower you. And Sarah, I want to thank you for sharing your brilliance, your genius, your vision with all of us, because you are a goddess and you are bossing up and helping us all live bigger, better, and bolder by blazing this trail. So thank you. <laughs> you remind me also to just add one last thing. Just because we're gentle doesn't mean we're too nice. It Ooh. means we can be gentle and fierce. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> all right. Glad you added that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sarah, I'm going to put all the information about your, your campaign and where to contact you in the description box, but can you just tell us one more time uh, about your campaign, the date, what, what people can do when they get there, how they can help you? Yeah, thank you. So again, sarasinacroce.com forward slash Kickstarter. And the uh, idea of a Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign is to say, yes, please, we want this paradigm shift. We want a different way to market uh, our businesses. And yes, we want you to publish this book. And there's different levels of financial rewards that you can put in there. So you can start it even just $1 and just say, yes, I want you to write this book. And, and then it goes up for $8. You have the ebook and then there's a different you know, higher levels of support, but, but anything counts. So even a dollar, yay, I am so happy that you're part of the gentle marketing community. Thank you so much. Oh, 
Beautiful, Sarah. Thank you. I'm so grateful to you coming to us all the way from Switzerland live where it's already nighttime there and it's morning <laughs> here. So thank you, Sarah Santa Croce, founder of the Gentle Business Revolution. You are rocking it and you are proving that your wisdom can blaze new trails to help us all achieve our dreams. So thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank You're you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you all of you for joining us today for Boss Up Goddess. I'm Elizabeth Ann Atkins, and I interview trailblazing women like Sarah Santa Croce, who are doing amazing things that can help us all. If you're getting value out of this program, please do like, share, subscribe, comment. And I'd love to hear what you think about Sarah's program and her book and her message. And she'd love to hear it as well. So please do drop us a comment and click that notification bell to, so you'll know every time I upload a new video or go live. So meanwhile, remember, you have the power. And I'll see you next time.